It's a Luigi's Mansion reunion here in King Boo's Haunted Hideaway. And just because half the contestants are already dead doesn't mean I'm going to show them mercy. Let's have a good clean fight. And by clean, I mean dirty. Hey everybody, how's it going? One mischievous monarch, two terrifying pitfalls, and a billion ways to go mad. You'll find it all beneath the behind that door. Deprenging, rearranging, it's King Boo's Haunted Hideaway. Want to hear a few secrets about this board? Well, of course. Come close, folks. The walls have ears. The stairs are staring. The whole manor has no manners. But don't panic. Keep your head is keeping your head is the key to the haunted hideaway where you must locate King Boo. The matter is a maze where you can't scan ahead to find the correct path. That is, that the true path leads to King Boo. Most other paths, well, those that end in pitfall rooms. Take the correct hat turns and you'll stumble upon King Boo's den. He'll give you up a star for ten coins. Then King Boo will boot you all out and you'll restart your star hunt here, but all the rooms will be shuffled. Let's see who rolls first. Smack that dice block. Punch with your Wii remote. So yeah, what he just said right there is the main gimmick and of course I'm going last, which eh, could be a blessing or a curse in this level. Um, King Boo's Haunted Hideaway is basically, the gimmick of it is one big roguelike where it's completely randomly generated every time you play. And every time you get the start, as he said, you'll get all booted out to the starting area of the mansion and you will have to go back in and find a new path to get to King Boo. Right here, fools, right under your nose. Now bring me my ten coins. Yeah, surprisingly enough, this is when I started changing the formula for Mario Party, and instead of making it 20 coins to get the star, it got discounted to 10 for this, which I guess I can understand why, because it's a really random uh, chance of getting the King Boo. Now it's time to start this party! Let the games begin! Yay. Mario Party... It started to see where the fall-off of this series was. It wasn't until the car happened when the series decided to take a small death. Kind of fitting that we're talking about that in a Boo level, and also because Boo was the first to go up. But this one, I would say, is the gimmick Mario Party. It doesn't play like any of the other ones. Each board has its own unique gimmick. They're more straightforward than past Mario Party boards were. Also, wow, that is a very ungenerous uh, start to this mansion. Alright, so to start off King Boo's Haunted Hideaway, uh, let's take a look at the map. As you can see, I probably should just uh, go back here. Can I go to the magnifying glass? There we go. As you can see, it's all, um, you have no idea what's up ahead. Every room is basically completely different. There are some uh, happening spaces in here. As you saw with Boo, any in front of these uh, piranha plants, they will bite you and steal 10 coins from you. Uh, the chest right here, it's shaking. Uh, there's a chance to get one of three items. It can either be 20 coins, uh, a random piece of candy, which is basically the items of this game, or it'll be te uh, 10 little red boos, pink boos. I like to call them pink boos because they're more pink than red, as I talked about in Boos Haunted Bash, um, that will just steal your money. Uh, there's another happening space that hasn't shown up yet, um, where the Mauser is this little guy right here. If you have a happening space in front of them, they basically act like the boost of Mario Party's past, where you can steal coins, you can steal stars, or you can steal um, candy from other players. And the c returning from uh, Coraland, I guess you could say, since what we've done for this little mini series, is Womp. You can pay a toll of five coins to go past him, and he will block that path up there. But, unfortunately, if you go up north, then he doesn't actually block the path. You actually have to pay for him to be able to block the other path. So, I guess, if you feel like a player is going to get too close to King Boo, and you think you're going the wrong way, but they're going the right way, it's a good deterrent for them. Other than that, there's only one more happening space to talk about, and it's in front of a wardrobe it, that has a mirror inside it. If you land on that happening space, it can randomly um, select a player to be pulled to that spot. I, in the past, thought it was going to be you had to go to... You went to a randomly selected wardrobe. Uh, I got a part of plan, but at least I got a happening star, so I'm tied with Boo. 
Other than that, basically anything goes for this board. This can be a really good board or a really bad board. It's kind of split between people who play this game. Some people love it if their luck is good. Some people absolutely despise this board because, you know, luck isn't really their forte. But for now, winner or dinner. Kind of fitting that I landed on the Piranha Plant before this. Bonus minigame. Grab the most coins in the Oasis. Watch out for the Piranha Plants. When you when the Piranha Plant throws you out of the Oasis, get ready to launch an action. You'll pop up in the center. Controls. Just move around. You hold the Wii Remote sideways and to jump. They said Oasis, they weren't kidding. I think this is one of like the iconic games that this uh, mini games this game has. Very is easy mini game. Of course, you can also screw over the other players and your teammates as well by jumping on them. Ooh, go away! Oh, don't. Mmm. How did they even get me? Boo! Mine! Mine! Oh, I got it at least. And we won with 13 points. Alright, well, at least I made my money back. I have three coin margins, so basically I just landed on uh, blue space. All right, Boo, where are you going to go? I kind of feel bad that I uh, chose Boo for this board, even though I was sticking with a theme, because if you think about it, he's got a home field advantage. You know, being that this is his board. Well, his boss's board, but you know what I mean. I was honestly um, debating on whether to who we should have for the fourth player on this. It was going to either be Toad, Birdo, or Blooper, but I didn't unlock Blooper because I haven't really played much of Mario Party 8. I did a few test runs before we jumped into this, but that's beside the point. But it was kind of hard to see who I could really fit for uh, this little mini, this little series, and it's going to be kind of hard to figure out who we're going to go for for the next Mario Party game. I don't even know where the hell he's going. That's either going to go to King Boo or, or Pitfall. Because looking at the map, uh, that could lead anywhere. Alright, got a five. Let's see what's at the shop. Alright, let's see. We got three pieces of candy. We got the Duolio candy. Roll two dice and duel with the first player you meet. Often or not, you only dueling for one coin, so it's kind of hit or miss. I guess you get the two dice blocks for ten. Um, vampire candy. Take coins from other players. You throw the dart to decide how many, and that includes all players, not just a specific player. And twice candy. Let you hit two dice blocks. You know what? I'm gonna go for the vampire candy. Dry bones has been notoriously evil uh, the last time I played this, and I feel like he's going to be going for King Boo um, in that next roll, so... Ooh, we got Thrice Candy. Nice. Or Thrice Candy, sorry. Uh, let's go straight. I don't really have the money to pay off for Womp right now. Let's see. Toad. It's going to be four player. Um, at least it'll give me a good idea if uh, Dry Bones did get the pitfall. Although that would mean that Boo probably has a higher chance of getting TV now. But hopefully we can get some money out of that uh, vampire candy we got. Anyways, Scooter Pursuits! Blast your rivals out of the arena, shoot out. You have 30 seconds to rack up the most hits. Cut, your, cut off your foes' escape routes and fire on them when they least expect it. Move forward, back, turn left and right, and two to shoot. Very simple, very easy controls. Oh, it's like a game we're going to be playing of, like, hover soccer or whatever. Oh, boy. Don't! Oh, this is hectic. Hit 
This is basically like a souped up version of Shell Shock from Mario Party 2. And I love Shell Shock. It's one of my favorite mini games in that game. And this is also one of my favorite mini games now in this game because I won. That's how it usually goes. <laughs> Poor Boo, he just collapses onto the ground. As well as Toad. Dry Bones, I don't know what he's doing. I guess he's just trying to like hold himself together or whatnot. Alright, Boo, where are you gonna go? I swear, there's a sanctum behind that door. Nope, there's a... That's a pitfall. I love it. All the pink boos just show up and just, like, heave-ho you down that hole. It, like, nothing opens up underneath you. Poor Boo, I feel so bad for him. Hey, Toad, what are you gonna do? With all the pitfalls <clears throat> and the uh, just randomly generated rooms that you get for this board, this can either be a really high scoring board or a really low scoring board. I've had times where it's been an entire game and only like one star was given out. And Drybone's got the pitfall as well. So at least I know the correct path not to go. And that means whatever sanctum that we come across next will be the correct one. I do have the money for it, so let's take a look. Alright, so... We only have a chance to go down, but if we go right... Oh, there's a Mauser right there. We could get a hacking space and steal some stuff from... Uh, everyone else. Oh, DK space is right there. If you land on DK space, then you're actually safe from one of the pitfalls, and also the first person who lands on him gets a star. It's a guaranteed star, by the way. Uh, you know what? Let's use our Vampire Candy and then we'll just wean it with a roll. Right, here we go. I actually do like the effect of it, how it turns into like a va undead vampire-ish version of the character. Boo actually looks like the best out of all of them. I haven't seen Drybone's uh, vampire version. I've seen Toad's and it's nothing to really note on. Alright, let's see. Usually the highest chance you get is to get the one coin. I'm gonna pray for the ten or at least five. And lo and behold, my luck always lands on the one coin. I swear, that tile is bigger than all the other ones. I mean, some profit is better than no profit, but although I wish I would just get a ten once in my life with that thing, I have only ever gotten a five and nothing but ones. I don't know if my timing is just terrible, or what. And I roll with you. Hey Toad, how's it going? Are you gonna cry in the corner like Luigi's Mansion? Be, I mean, it'd be kind of fitting. That's why I brought you along for this one. I also found it kind of weird that Toad was a playable character uh, from Mario Party 5 and up, because... I don't know, just, it's weird seeing that the host of the past games is now a playable character. I guess... I'm not as um, put off by Boo as a playable character as I would Toad because Boo was more of like an event space in past games when he got swapped out, so I can kind of see he was only like a a board master for one board and that was his own board in four. But anyways, Cartastrophe. Finish the first and two laps, cart race against your foes. Take the inside curves and finish, finish a lap a little faster. It's just very simple. Steer with the Wii Remote, accelerate, and brake with one and two. If we're on the case of weird Mario Party characters, I don't understand why they were made playable. We can talk about, um, let's, let's go over a history. Also, I'm not seeing myself as number four. Um, why was Dry Bones of all characters a playable character in the series? Like, I, ne I never got it. It's like, who was asking? I really want to play as Dry Bones throughout the series. Uh, let's see. Uh, well, there was also Toadette, which, you know, kind of an iconic character. I mean, she debuted in Falcon Door, and everyone just completely fell in love with her. And, you know, uh, Treasure Tracker and all. Uh, let's see. Hammer Bros. Really weird. Why? I never got Hammer Bros being a playable character in this game. I think this is the only game he's actually a playable character in. I don't think he was ever playable in 9, 10, or Super. 
No, he wasn't even a playable character in uh, seven. And of course, Dry Bones wins with the Bone Mobile. And I came in last, of course. I'm not really good at that one. Um, also, if I want to talk about characters that have no reason to be playable, can we talk about Spike in Mario Party 10? And who asked for Spike of all characters to be a playable character? Seriously, name me a character who has shown up in like, what? One Yoshi story and like maybe a couple of levels in the um, new Super Mario Bros stuff. I don't ever remember anyone asking for Spike to be playable, and if you have, why? Oh no. Oh, this could end badly. Ooh, please, anyone but me. Anyone but me. Dry Bones, I'll take it. He's actually tied with me for the coin lead, so thank you, Toad. You actually secured a coin lead for me. Another weird choice was to have Bowser be a playable character in Super Mario Party, which, okay, I can kind of understand why. He, he's he been shafted throughout the series for a long time, so why not make him playable? Bowser Jr., I also understand, you know, the iconic character that hasn't really had much of an impact in the party series until Super. And I mean, he's, he's playable in Smash Bros, he's a playable in Mario Kart, so yeah, I can understand why. Monty Mole, on the other hand, I have no idea why they made him playable. I guess they needed another character with hands, so that's why. Pom Pom, I can understand as well. Mini boss for the new Mario Bros. series, although I don't understand why the other uh, mini boss Koopa character I don't remember the name of because they were that unimportant. Uh, why they weren't a playable character as well. Alright, 17, and that is 23. I think I'm money. If I make the right choices, I am guaranteed the star. Yep. It's a good thing I made that roll, because Toad would have beaten me to King Boo. Hey, you found me. Now, how about my 10 coins? Fuck him over. I got that star right here. I don't know why I'm making King Boo sound like a chain smoker. Maybe that's how he died. Oh, whatever. First star goes to me. Kind of fitting, King Boo's in a room surrounded by portraits. Although it's gotta be a little awkward that he's helping Luigi out. Think you're so smart? You've taken a star, but now I awaken the bizarre! And. The Magic Jumps! Whoa. Game Boo uses Makeover Mojo to alter the manor and the path to the star. Here we go again! It was nice of us to at least give us an escape route before he uses magic. Right, 2v2. Let's see what it's gonna be. Ooh, Paint Misbehaving! One of my favorite minigames in this, and also has one of the most hilarious, like, um, winning animations in all the game. Work with your teammates to paint the more Goombas your team's color than your rivals. It's not over until it's over. Keep shooting paint until the bit, till the bit of end. Just move sideways, move up and down, shoot paint. Pretty easy. Although you can get hung up on your partner, and also you can't stun the other team with your paintballs. Oh yeah, I forgot Goomba. Why was he a playable character in the series as well? Uh, Toad! Toad! I get- I, I- although, as funny as it is that we see Goomba as a playable character, since, you know, he's a character with no arms- TOAD! As hilarious as it is, it's also still kind of weird that he's playable. And I think we won- yep, we definitely won that one. All right, time for the best winning animation. We decide to run off. And paint the other team red. 
I love it. Alright. Hopefully there's a shop nearby so I can spend that hard-earned money. Alright, Boo, where are you gonna go? Nice, Boo's being a high roller this round. Also, I didn't realize Dry Bones has two pieces of candy on him. I don't know how much candy he has, though. I wasn't paying attention. Oh! Toad's going upstairs. Basically, land on that space is, is a guaranteed way to get a lot of coins and also a lot of good bonuses. Alright, he's got price candy. Yeah, ooh. He's gonna be covering a lot of ground. Springo Candy, that launches you to whatever space uh, the other player you land on is. And he got King Boo. Ha! Ah, I don't need a pipe because I was already outside the mansion! I do like the little jig that Dry Bones does as well when he wins uh, something, like a mini game or gets a star. Toad also does a really nice little dance as well. Luigi, it looks like he's trying to like spread his wings and become a bird. And Boo, he just, he floats. He just floats, that's it. Alright, well, at least I get first run of this mansion. Maybe I'll get something nice. Maybe not. Who knows? And that's the way roguelikes work! Aw, oh, man. And the high roll with Boo. Nice. Alright, we'll play a minigame. It's time for a battle minigame! I'll get coins from each player. The winner keeps the lion's share. Okay, pitch your coins, everyone. It's going to be... 10 coins. It's always 10 coins. It's never been the 50 coins. In my history of playing Mario Party, it has never been the max uh, payout for it. Only 34 coins. Some of you cheaped out. Now, which, which minigame shall we decide on who gets all these coins? I mean, if I win this, at least... Dry Bones won't get the star next time. Ooh. This is basically a luck-based minigame. Okay, bring your best game! A pile of 34 coins is at stake. Cut from the team! Take turns snipping wires. Some are dead wires, but others trigger a catapult that sends you flying. It's all luck here. Crush your fingers. Just... Move the pointer, move the scissors left to right, A and B to snip it, and just pray that you've got the right snips. It's basically, I guess, Bowser's Big Blast. If, you know, instead of being exploded into the next county, you get slingshot into the next county. Uh, do I cut the red wire or the blue wire? Choices, choices. We'll go with this one. Nice, we're safe. Alright, Dry Bones. You can go for, go for that wire, and... There he goes! Alright, Boo. Use your ghostly scissors to cut that wire. Nope, Boo's safe. Alright, Toad. Ugh, I guess you could say this is coming down to the wire. Ow! 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 <laughs> And there goes Toad. My terrible pun sent him flying. He had to get away from me. Okay, let's see. I mean, I still get a share of the coins no matter what. Uh, we'll go with this one. We're safe. Alright, Boo. Now, if you can snip the wrong wires, then, you know what? I'd gladly give you ten coins. You're playing Dirty Ghost. We'll go with this one. Pray for it to be the right one. And it was. Nice. 
All right, Boo, listen here. Just snip the wrong wires. Thank you. I'll be sure to give you your 10 coins. Also, I gotta love how, like, um, fair Boo is to everyone else because he, it being Boo, he would break all the mini games because, you know, he can fly. We have a victor. I'll dole out the coins based on the results. All right, so Boo gets nine coins. I get 15, and wait, why does Toad? Oh, Boo gets eight coins. I got 25 coins. So I stole two coins from Boo. So what? He's dead. What does he, what does he need money for? Sorry, he's probably going to lose it all on a piranha plant. Oh, oh, I hate it when I'm right. Or in this case, I love it. Although, me being right some of the times, and by some of the times, I mean a lot of the times, usually comes back to bite me in the ass. Right, so, two courtyards, but no shop or no good happening space. And he's gonna use Springo Kenny. Hopefully, he's probably gonna land on Toad. But if he lands on Boo and rolls a one, I'll laugh. Hands on Boo! Oh my god. Will he actually roll a one? I mean, it won't really do anything to him. He has no coins to lose, but still. Nope, he rolled an eight. Right, well, at least we get a little bit of an insight as to what the next room is going to be. Is it a split room? Nope, it's still a straight shot. Is there... I think that there's a chest in there. That's really all about it. This is a very straightforward mansion so far. Alright, please give me a ten! Four. I mean, at least I didn't land on a happening space. Alright, what is tonight's minigame going to be? It is going to be... Mosh Pit Playroom! A really chaotic minigame. Gather all 50 balls that match your panel's color. Ignore your opponents, focus on getting your balls. I love some of the phrasing in these minigame titles or descriptions. Hold it sideways, move jump, very easy. Stun the opponents by jumping on them, as with every single minigame that you can jump in. Also, Fly Guys! I wish we could play as you, but at least we got Shy Guy in future games. Alright, I got blue, gotta go over oh, for all the blue balls. Kind of fitting that it's Luigi who gets the blue balls. Depth perception is really weird in this mini game. Sometimes it feels like you're on the ball, <laughs> but you're a little like ahead or behind it. Come on, give me balls. There is it. There it is. There we go. Wow, I dry bones almost caught up to me. All right, Luigi, flock like a bird. Alright, Boo, where are you gonna go this time? Up, oh, using Springle Candy, he's actually being smart for once. I guess he's got re really tired of landing on all those happening spaces. And he landed on Dry Bones. Boing. I always like how, like, Boo's body, instead of just becoming a spring, he, his whole, like, lower half just coils up into a spring. No one's gonna get out of that room. Unless Drybones has a good roll. Or Toad. Bye. Nope, Toad's stuck in the room. Ah, bit-sized candy. I forget what bit-sized candy does. I know it's kind of like Super Paper Mario, where it sounds like some... Uh, summons like little mini versions of you, but I don't remember what it does. I think it gives you coins per space you land on. 
Kind of like what Peach and Daisy's special abilities in uh, Mario Party 6 and 7 were. Alright, can I actually get a high roll for once? Thank you! That's exactly the high roll I was looking for. And we got Spring Gokin. Nice. I can't tell if that's actually a room that branches off or if it's just another turning room. In which case, this is a very straightforward mansion. Sugar Rush. I was kind of wishing it was the other one. Recreate the simple cake by moving toppings to the right spots. Get two cakes completed first. If you drop the topping in the wrong spot, you'll have to pick it up again and place it in the right spot. It's basically just a point and click minigame. Very simple and very easy. That's very lovely, Koopa. Oh, damn it. I had my cursor over on the left, but for some reason it landed on the right. Hit detection in this minigame is a little weird. Like, you, you saw me hover it over the right spots, but for some reason it just blew, blew the toppings right back onto the plates. I don't really like this minigame. Also, how are Goombas baking and decorating all these cakes when I have no hands? Hmm, maybe they're descendants of the Goomba that is Mario Party or Super Mario Party's playable character. Who knows? Although it made more sense, it was just nothing but Koopas, like the intro. Well, at least it's starting to finally branch off. Well, behind Womp is no doubt one of the Sanctums, although we don't know if that's the correct Sanctum or not. Toad's going back upstairs! He just really loves the attic. Dry bones, level five. Uh, let's take a look. Let's see, I need to roll a one, two, three, four, five. Six. That's a six, but that's most definitely going to be a sanctum in there. But that could also be a pitfall. I don't want to waste the Spring Go Candy, because if that turns out to be a pitfall, I'll be launched all the way back here. So, I'll save that for insurance, but I'm going to need to roll if I want to get into that room. A one, two, three... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight or higher. No, I don't want the candy. Alright, here we go! Four. Well, they can't all be winners. 